Hello, this is Tom Brevoort. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Yes, welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 171, and you're with your high pressure country, Ray. Welcome, welcome. Uh, it's another waning gibbous. So up in the sky, if you have a look at the moon right now, you will see that it is a waning gibbous, and that means tonight is another moonwalk segment. So I'm going to crack straight into it. Um, no dilly dallying. For those that, that don't know, a moonwalk is a, is literally a read through of a comic book, a random Moon Knight comic, uh, and it's presented in audio format for your listening pleasure. So again, if you have the comic, crack it open, read along to this audio, or if you are on the move and you just want to uh, experience issue 13 in audio form uh just sit back relax and enjoy and tonight we will be doing moon knight volume 5 issue 13 the uses of restraint so we've actually reviewed this issue before and i think it's popped up in an isla ra so it's a very popular issue uh, this was uh, requested by fellow loony Corey hardiman who will also be lending his vocal talent here um, so you can hear him here. It's uh, This comic was published December 2007 with writer Charlie Houston, penciler Tom Coker, also on inks, uh, and colorist Dean White and letterer Joe Caramagna. So without any further ado, loonies, sit back and enjoy the uses of restraint. Agreed, then? I don't like it. It's for the best. So you say, but I still don't like it. Yes, but this way you get to do what you need to do, and I... I get the exposure I require. It's not the way. Your way will get you arrested or in the booby hatch. What good to me are you in the booby hatch? It isn't about... That's exactly what it's about. Don't fool yourself otherwise. No, it's about them. It's about the things they do and the price they have to pay. The question is, do you want to stay on the field, or do you want to have them stick you on the bench? See, we're on the same page. Me, I'm a businessman. I understand how the game is played. It's a quid pro quo world. Give some to get some. I'll do it. Of course you will. Was there ever any doubt? One of those nights. I got rights. Sure, sure. Like there's any other kind of night these days. How come? I want to know. I'm the one dragged in. Look at me. Why the hell am I the one you pull? For a while, had nights full of peace and quiet. Sitting up here, shuffling papers. I mean, here I am. Here I am having a, what you call a, a domestic situation with my kid. That's a private matter, that is. What happens in a man's home, his castle? That's not just a law, that's a, a, you know, a principle on which this country is founded. Bedrock, that is. That was bliss. Sweet bliss. A well-earned rest after years of insanity, that was. And if I want to teach that little shit a lesson behind the closed doors of my castle, that's whose business? Mine, that's whose. No lunacy. Years of lunacy, 
and then well-earned peace and quiet. I got a right. I got a right to raise my kid as I see fit without... I gotta worry about freaks coming through the window and what you call disfiguring me. Till he came back. I mean, we got laws now, don't we? About this stuff, we got laws to protect people. Normal people from freaks like this. So what the hell am I here and he's not? I wanna know. Why am I listening to this, Bales? Lieutenant says you get him. Lieutenant says you get all of them like this one. Lieutenant says anyone comes in that he did this to, you deal with them. Lieutenant says he's your problem as long as he's on the unregistered list. Tell me something, Flint. You fucked the lieutenant's wife or something? Must have been pretty bad, whatever made him hate you so much. Sure, sure. That or the time I was elected homecoming queen over him. Hey! Do you ever hear of a thing called a digital camera? How about computers? Internet? Sure, sure. All ways of looking at porn, right? Hey, is no one listening to me here? Am I invisible here? I got what you call no presence here? Cut him loose, Bales. Come on, detective. Guy's got a sheet. Guy's got a child protective file. Guy's gonna go home and beat the hell out of that kid. You see him hit the kid? No. The kid make a complaint? No. This guy called in an assault. And you put the bracelets on him. You blew it. Cut him loose. Fucking bullshit, man. That's right, cop. You blew it. I'm gonna... When I come back to swear a complaint on that freak, I'm gonna swear one on you too. The whole department. Sure, sure. You go rights. Got to protect him. But hey, before you go, something I want to show you. The guy did that to you, the freak? Seems he keeps records. Leastways, that's how I figure he remembers to check up on his favourites. Seems some take a couple return visits before they get the message. Of course, these are just the ones still got noses and lips and such like. I can show you the others. You want to see them? Sure, sure. Maybe next time. Never get tired of that look on their faces, detective. Yeah, abject terror. Nothing like it. Fun stuff. So what you say, detective? You're going to come in from the cold and get legaled up? Just that there's a pool and I can get some great odds if you say you might. Got any skinny? Sure, sure. I got skinny. Skinny is, the moon man will do what comes natural. Meaning, you'll do whatever fucks shit up the most. It's madness to feel this again after so long. Imbecile de foi. Hmm? What? Nothing. Go back to sleep, Rob. Easy for you to say, Chatty. Was I talking aloud? This all I didn't realize. Do you think I keep earplugs next to the bed so I won't hear the cats screwing in the alley? You talk to yourself all the time, and in your sleep. What do I talk about? Mark, what else? Something on your mind? Hmm, no. Why? Was I? You haven't said a word since we got out of the movie. Did you not like it? No, it was... You don't remember, do you? You were bored. You're bored all the time lately. That's not true. I'm just a little distracted. By work or, or something. You're bored, Marlene. So bored you're barely with me. Now look. It's okay, really. It's okay. Oh well, thank you for the permission to be a little out of sorts. Seriously, Marlene, I don't mind. I know you're used to a different kind of energy. It's not a big surprise someone mellow takes getting used to. 
change is hard work. No ma, I'm not. I'm not with some girl I told you, I'm working. Ma, I'm a graveyard security guard, there's no one to talk to. No, it's not. It's not dangerous, it's, it's Long Island for God's sake. How, how can it be dangerous? What? No, I didn't. I didn't. Ma, I did not curse at you. I know. I know Ricky never cursed. I miss him too, Ma. Look, Ma, I need to call you back and... No, nothing's wrong. Just gotta make my rounds off the plant. And I really need to focus on the job. Hang on. Let me get a look. I thought you were good at this. I am. I'm the best. Fuck. I'm the only one at this. It just takes a moment to see what's really going on. I can't believe you're acting like this. Acting like what? I am going out, yes? There is reason I should sit here and talk to myself and keep you awake? All I said was, you said it was okay to have feelings for him, yes? And it is, I understand. You don't just stop loving someone because you understand nothing. If you think this is about love, you understand nothing at all. Shit, men. Is there anything more stupid? I'm not looking for an adrenaline rush, Taylor. I mean, the man in my life, my father and my brother, both murdered. My ex-husband left me and, and Mark, well, you saw him in action. Do you honestly think that's what I want? I'm looking for someone I can hang on to. Yes, I hear that. But when you're in a relationship like that, it becomes like a bad habit. You don't just shake it off. Uh, excuse me. Are we in your way? Give me your money! What do you see? Data. Observation. How he walks. Adjusts his tie. Says hi to security. Touches his fly to see that it's not open. Rubs chapstick on his lips. Glances at the ass of a girl walking past. Frowns at the dog pissing on the tree. Ah, there, hello. I see you. Yes, I see your lonely little childhood. That time mummy caught you playing with yourself. That feeling of superiority born out of nothing, but always having the highest test grades in class. Yes, I see the treadmill at home covered in dust. I see the bottle of hand sterilizer always in your pocket. I see how very boring it must be to be you. Yawn, I say. Yawn. Anything? There's always something. Look hard enough, there's always something. Something they're ashamed of. Tell me. Yes, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what he wants to hide. Go home. Go home before it's too late. What do you think you're doing? C'est moi, c'est moi. Frenchie? Sorry, man. Someone comes down here unannounced, I kind of figure it's going to be Bushman or something. Raoul Aman Bushman, you will never see again. Fine by me. Guy was a psycho.
Jesus, you been in a war or something? Something like that. Motherfucker. Shit damn stock industries tech. Can I? Yeah, go on in. Damn lock doesn't work anyhow. Ask me, registration was all about fat government contracts for all this gear. That's if you ask me. And no one is. Excuse me. Yes, hi, hello. Um, just trying to come in, come in. Dr. Depp. Dr. Deptford, yes, that's me. Doctor, not video technician, unfortunately. Mark Spector, yes? Good, good. Sorry, I'm a little late. Nope, not a problem, just got in myself. Thank you for taking the graveyard appointment. Things will settle eventually, but for now, lots to do. I just need to... There, good. Just make sure you're checked in and... And just see that no one has teleported in, shape changed, and replaced you on your way to my office. That happened? What? No. <laughs> no, no. Just a joke. How would you know? How would I? Oh, yes, of course. Yes, well, truth is, I wouldn't. I mean, not until we started talking, I wouldn't. So am I me, then? Well, well, I suppose that's what we're here to determine, in a way. Funny, I thought we were here to determine if I'm crazy. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, Mr. Spectre, there's no doubt that you're crazy. So you can stop pretending that you're capable of self-deprecating banter or any other healthy social strategies that might put one at ease. And we can get on with processing and rejecting your application and you can stop wasting other people's valuable time. I'm curious, does that work often? Trying to provoke volatile interviewees and sudden violent explosions? Does it work often? Sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. And when it does work, what keeps the volatile interviewees from hurting you? I do. Thank you, Tector. We're just fine in here. I can stay. Nowhere, just... No, we've got plenty of equilibrium in here and Dr. Selim will be expecting you. And on we go. Let's take a look at the application form. Military service, CIA contractor, former Avenger, several well-documented years as a masked vigilante, all of which would exempt you from the field training program if your application goes through. Good, good. The physical you took when you came in last week was borderline. Excellent general condition for a man in his late thirties, but several serious injuries over the years. Looking at this, the miracle isn't that you completed the 20 mile run in the endurance test, it's that you walked in here on your own. Which raises a question. Why haven't you registered your powers? I don't have powers. That's odd, because I have accounts here of you having powers. Not only that, but transcripts of interviews from former Avengers who state they witnessed you using them. I had powers. I don't have them anymore. I haven't had them for years. You know, this process, we're just getting up to speed around here. I haven't done many interviews yet. Most people who come in, if they have powers, they, well, have them. They're different because of that. Some of them, they're literally not human. But you, you're not only human, but you've been a vigilante with and without powers. I'm curious. What was it like, being more than human? What was that like? Powers, they're overrated. They make you cocky, sloppy, and people get hurt. Hmm, a wise answer. Well considered and compassionate, and wholly out of character. I hope you'll understand if I discount it. And by the way, would you prefer the shade up Makes no difference to me. Right, no difference. Well, a few things then. Powers. Establishing that one has them is generally not difficult, provided they are demonstrable. Establishing that one no longer has powers is somewhat more tricky. 
Just to be safe and thorough, I think it would be best if we registered your former powers. If that's what it takes. What it takes, Mr. Spectre, let's be honest. What's happening here is that your sanity and character are being assessed to determine what level of cautionary alert should be placed on your file. By coming in and signing the application exam permission form, you accepted this possibility. Well... I simply think it's better you know the circumstances before we proceed. Sure, thanks. You may, if you like, terminate the interview at any time, but I can't say how that might influence my assessment. Well, I can't get any crazier, can I? If I didn't know better, Mr. Spectre, I'd judge that as an honest response. As part of my evaluation, I'll interview several of your associates over the coming weeks. But if you're willing to try something, I'd like to start that process tonight. I wonder if you'll allow me to speak with Mr. Jake Lockley and Mr. Stephen Grant. They... they aren't... Yes? They aren't real. Those were roles, aliases, I assumed. Then what I propose should pose no threat nor influence in my final report. You can begin by simply gazing at the moon and relaxing. Feeling rested? Rested? You kidding me, Mac? I had nothing but rest for years now. I feel rested like a corpse feel rested like I've been tucked away in a pine box and put six feet under is how rested I feel. Tell ya, wish I could get my hands on him. On who? Guy who did it. Guy who cold cocked me and tied me up and locked me away. Spectre. That no good son of a bitch. Guy was supposed to be a pal, a partner, share and share alike. The deal was all for one and one for... Yeah, but he double-crossed me. Him and that twist of his Marlene decided he was better off without good old Jake. And worse, he locked me in there with that damn fancy pants and all his highfalutin jibber-jabber. Yes. Speaking of Mr. Grant, I wonder if I might ask you to look at the moon for a moment. Of course, the whole thing was a wild misunderstanding. What I'd actually requested was directions to the freeway. But who was I to let the two ladies down? <laughs> it was only when they presented me with a bill for services rendered that I understood why they'd first asked if I was a police officer. <laughs> I can't tell you how fortunate I feel to have met you, Doctor. I can't recall the last time I heard human laughter. Dear Jake is an able enough chauffeur, but he is entirely without a sense of humor. I mean to say, isn't it drab enough being incarcerated without making it worse by indulging in melancholy? A very healthy attitude, Mr. Grant. One that shows great balance and self-awareness. Well, I am nothing if not self-aware. Ugh. The way this man dresses, these clothes are a prison in and of themselves. I wonder, Mr. Grant, have you noticed the moon this evening? Clearly unfit to serve in either an official or an unofficial capacity. I'm recommending that Spectre be classified as a low red risk factor, advanced to a high red if he's ever found to possess powers. As it is, his utter instability of mind combined with his combat training makes him a serious danger. Whatever technical resources and or armaments at his disposal should be confiscated at once. I am further recommending that the feasibility of bringing legal action against Spectre for his activities as Moon Knight be studied. The population will be considerably safer once he is incarcerated and receiving the care and treatment he requires. Little man... Insect. Why do you task my servant, insect? Why do you seek to impede my work with your petty laws and governance? What prize do you hope to win? What punishment do you suppose you can escape for this trespass? I'm sorry? I'm talking to who? Insect. Worm. Foul globule of waste and decay. You are talking to no one. You are not asked to talk, only your obedience is desired and commanded by the Lord of Vengeance and the Moon. Conju speaks! Yes, Conju. Excellent. I see. You see nothing. I see. I see you. Yes, I see your lonely little childhood. I see that time mommy caught you playing with yourself. I see that feeling of superiority born out of nothing but always having the highest test grades in class. Yes, I see the treadmill at home covered in dust. I see the bottle of hand sterilizer always in your pocket. Insect. 
I see the killing jar at home. The endless rows of many-legged and crawling things snuffed out and pinned in as a blade for your own pleasure. Aberration. I see the rag in the chloroform. I see the pigeon and the cat and the mice. I see you stroke their dead fur. And yourself, foul dreamer. I see the petty infant crimes and the buildings for power and godhood. The jealous tattling on and prodding on those greater than yourself. I see that I command obedience of such a thing as you is the only grace you shall ever know. Kneel, slave, and serve your lord. Once this has been validated downstairs, the rest of the paperwork will begin to process. There will be an official document, more of a certificate than a card, but this will do for now. What? Congratulations, Mr. Spectre. Moon Knight is a licensed, well, hero. You're registered as an independent, no shield or government affiliation. There's less uh, oversight that way. And that should be the last we need to meet. The late recording. And how'd that go? It worked. Was there ever any question? There was for me. No, there wasn't. Making people believe you're something else is your gift. Making yourself believe is the problem. Get out. I have things to do. No doubt, no doubt. That license must be burning a hole in your pocket. You're sure he won't hurt anyone? I'm sure. He'll be impotent for life now. But he won't hurt anyone. He's evil. Sadly, no, he's not. He's just human. Would there was such a thing as evil. I've been reading about some of the things you did, and wondering if you know what they might feel like. What? The level of S.H.I.E.L.D. Director Stark's involvement in the actual day-to-day -day workings of registration has yet to be determined. In an interview earlier today, Stark commented on so-called hero licensing. Certainly, there will be guidelines and minimum requirements as to who may be licensed to act as a sanctioned vigilante. But despite what some pundits have been saying lately, this is a democracy, which means anyone who wishes to may apply for licensing. That said, we're not going to be passing out licenses to any wackos who stumble in off the street. No! Licenses will be issued using the greatest of discretion, issued only to those individuals who display a similar level of discretion. Individuals who know the proper uses of restraint. No matter the personal risks. What's got you out of bed this hour anyway? Not that I mind the company. I could not sleep. Nightmares? No, I no longer suffer from them. Lucky you. Me, I get them every fucking night. Ricky? Yeah. You were with him? Yeah. I am sorry, I shouldn't have asked for these things. Nah, it's cool, your family. Besides, not like you never lost anything yourself, is it? See, Ray, yes. I have lost some things. My legs, yes? When I first was paralyzed, it was a challenge to overcome. Not to be able to walk, to stand on my own. Terrible, yes? But it taught me things. How better to rely on others to ask for help? To love honestly. Later I was told I might walk again, but the surgery would require I lose a part of myself, my lower legs, my feet. Parts, yes, that I had not used for years, but still I was in terror of losing them, as if in fear of losing the ground I had once walked on. 
Fear that in standing again I would lose the stability I had found. Great loss, it teaches us what we love, the things lost, the new things found. Say, Frenchie, you trying to tell me you want your old job back? No. Only that there are things one can desire without understanding. I uh, hear that. Just now I desire a beer. You? Yes, merci. Is this the last? Yeah. Most of what he wants is already at the townhouse or the warehouse he bought. Says he wants to be closer to things, keep a higher profile. Tell you, you and me may live in the past some, but he is a man for the future. No, you are wrong. He wants only the past. He does not know how to bid farewell to what must be cut off. Could be you're right. Show you something over here. How's that for living in the past? Yes, you see, it is hard. It is hard for old soldiers to say goodbye to their past, to say goodbye to their armor and their weapons, the trappings of the past, to leave gracefully the field of battle. When Wade Wilson, mercenary extraordinaire, was diagnosed with cancer, he went over the edge into insanity. Only an experimental treatment designed to emulate Wolverine's healing factor saved Wilson from certain death, but it mangled his appearance in the process. But hey, it motivated him to become Deadpool, right? And that's good for us. Because every other Thursday on the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast, we talk all things Deadpool. Movies, comics, we talk it all. And we also get into some random nonsense that could be pretty much anything or anything, just like whatever pops into Deadpool's head. So, if you like Deadpool, if you love random nonsense, then you should join us every other Thursday on the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. It's a weird, wild adventure. Yes, welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 171, and you have just heard our audio reproduction of The Uses of Restraint. It is volume 6, issue 13 of Moon Knight by Charlie Houston and Tom Coker. A huge thank you to guest loonies who lent their voices for this. So a big thank you to Corey Hardiman, who also chose the issue. Uh, the random issue, uh, and also to my better half, my way better half, Eve. Thank you so much for adding some vocals. Next phase, loonies, for episode 172, we'll be venturing into a waning crescent. So we'll be returning to our comic book reviews, and we'll be having a Lunapic classic run. Uh, and I'm very pleased to announce one of our patroonies, Justin the Owl Osgood will be on the show to help me chat and discuss this issue. It is Moon Knight Volume 1, Issue 17, titled Master Sniper's Legacy. My gosh, I haven't read this in a long time. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. Please check it out next week. Um, and yeah, and we'll, um, we'll crack into it. I also might just drop in a discussion thread on all our social platforms as well. So if you have any thoughts on issue 17, Master Sniper's Legacy, be sure to, to drop it in there as well. Um, we'd always love to hear from you. And uh, it's, it's always fun to discuss on the show. That about wraps us up for this episode. A huge thank you once again to all those involved. And I hope you did enjoy it as well. Um, it is always fun to put these things on. Um, but yeah, um, until then, we'll, we'll catch you later. May Conchu watch over the denizens of the night. I'm going to play this other pre-recorded thing. See you later. Looney listeners, you can contact Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast, 
on email at itkmoonnight at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook with a Facebook page and group, and on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Discord, Get Vocal, as well as on our website, intothenight.libson.com. You can also check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash itkmoonnight. Please consider checking out the bonus incentives and any contribution will help us expand the show. A big thanks to sponsors Hello Headphones, empowering gamers to play their best. Use the code ITKMOONNIGHT and get 10% off their online store. Also, a big thanks to Dreamland Comics. Use their code MOON and get a big 20% off their online store. We're also an affiliate member to Entertainment Earth. Please use the links to purchase any of your toy action figure needs. And each purchase helps support the show. We're a big part of the collective, a band of a few like-minded podcasters. And please check out the links in our show notes for access to all their shows. Alternatively, you can type in hashtag TheCollectiveNet on Twitter to see all the shows and all their tweets. Finally, if you'd like to review our show, please do so on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser. This will help us get out there just a little bit more and any loonies who don't know the show will be able to tune in. As always, take care, and may Conchu watch over the denizens of the night. Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Material used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners. Any reproduction of any properties of Marvel is solely for entertainment use only.